So let's discuss the microservice versus monolithic architecture technical contrast. Why it is important? Let me explain you. Uh, this is important because most of the time, in my experience, I have seen that uh, people are very confused in selecting the appropriate architecture, especially uh, between monolithic architecture or microservice architecture. As far as industry experience, I have uh, whatever I have, I have seen that uh, people are not properly analyzing the context which they are in. I mean, it has a. I mean, they have a some problem or some challenges which need to be solved. But that context need to be analyzed properly first. But what is happening in industry usually in industry uh, things are working like uh, some people have uh, developed. I mean, used some like I mean architecture, say for example microservice architecture, and then they are uh, preparing one agenda to prepare the presentation, and that presentation is delivered to the higher management team usually in the company, and they only talk about the goody goody things of that current architecture, and then. Uh, in the end effect, like management has just without giving any brain in it, just rolling out the same uh, architecture in, in all projects, right? Like that. And I have seen such a uh, live example in my experience. So it's not like I'm just uh, explaining you to, to, to tell you something as a story. It is not a story. It is a real thing, which I have seen in my uh, experience in, in not a specific to any company. This, uh, this is, it is like in general, I have seen this experience. So, so that's why to, to, for me, it is very important to explain you uh, some thumb rule and some contrast, technical contracts between uh, monolithic and microservice architecture so that after seeing this video, you have a definite intuition whenever you encounter with any such condition or any such situation where uh, you need to analyze your problem statement, your requirement thoroughly to decide the appropriate architecture. At that time, you definitely, definitely have a additional knowledge because of this video. So that is what my intention in this video Right. That is what my intention is here in this video, right? Okay. So let's let's move on. Uh, let's try to understand uh, the first uh, monolithic. I mean, mono, let's let's discuss first the microservice architecture. Then we will go for monolithic. So in my in microservice architecture, there are five or six key factors. You would say that these are the key principles, right? The first one is modularity, and that is that could be explained like services are loosely coupled and can be developed, deployed, and scaled independently. That is the key factor, right? Another key factor in microservice architecture is scalability. As I told several times to you, it facilitates a scaling specific functionality that requires more resource without affecting others. So it is very specifically, it is a scaling to certain things, not the whole. So that is the one important point, And that is the technical contrast between monolithic and, uh, and microservices. In monolithic, you have to scale complete. But in microservices, you have liberty to scale particular component or particular microservice only. Okay. The next is technology diversity. Technology diversity offers flexibility to use the best technology for each service based on its requirement. Right. And the next point is deployment. So microservices is supporting continuous deployment and integration. And that is more feasible also. And at the same time, it is leading to faster iteration cycle because it's a small release. So you can uh, do such things very frequently, right? Okay. The next is fault isolation. In case of monolithic, uh, faults impacts the complete application, right? But in microservices, the fault is only comes into particular microservice, not the whole market, whole ecosystem, right? So that's why it is like fault isolation. Your fault is in particular microservice. So that particular microservice needs some uh, I mean, fixing, but the rest of the part is working as usual. There is no change in it, right? That is what more important things. I mean, this is what the important point in microservice we can assume, right? The next point is development and maintenance. And this development and maintenance is very ideal for large teams and long term projects as it allows multiple teams to work in parallel, right? So because of the microservices, uh, this is possible, but in case of monolithic, it can't be possible as usual, right? Let's go to the another segment, which is monolithic architecture. So the first key point in monolithic architecture is it is a unified model, meaning all components and functionalities are tightly coupled within a single service. Another key feature of monolithic architecture is simplicity, right? Easier to develop, deploy and test initially due to a single code base and unified development environment. All right. 
The third key point here is performance, which is definitely, definitely good, better than microservice. So why is so? Because in, in, in case of monolithic architecture, direct method calls within a single process are faster, right? Always faster than inter-service communication over the network, right? So that's why this performance, it has a definitely a better performance than microservice architecture. Another key factor here is testing and debugging. A single application is often simpler to test and debug than distributed system, right? Another factor is in this case, a scaling will work on whole, this, on whole system, right? So if you have a scaling requirement, you have to scale the entire application, which can be less efficient and more expensive, right? Then technology step. Uh, you do not have liberty to choose multiple technology stack in case of monolithic architecture. It is a, it could be a constraint for monolithic architecture. Other, uh, but in case of microservice architecture, you have liberty to select a stack in every microservice independently. So uh, say for example, one uh, microservice can be work on stack A and you can choose stack B for service, uh, microservice uh, Y, like other microservice. So there are possibility that you can choose which tech stack is best suited for that microservice, which is possible in case of microservice architecture, but in case of monolithic architecture, this is not possible. So these are the basic techniques technical contrast between monolithic and microservice architecture. I hope I have already explained it earlier also, but I think this is very much required to understand uh, by heart to this contrast so that whenever you have a confusion, you just remember or, or just, just repeat this contrast and then go for next lookup. You might have definite, definite advantage after this lookup, right? So that is what I believe it is, uh, it is help, it will help you to, to now create the segregation between what exactly your context is required and then uh, on the basis of your context, you, you are able to choose between microservice and monolithic architecture. Okay, let's deep dive uh, in the next segment of video with some thumb rule, thumb rule in case of monolithic and microservice architecture, so that that thumb rule will help you in decide which architecture you will go for your context. Okay, so let's meet in the next segment. Thank you. Thumb rule for identifying the right architecture between um, monolithic and versus microservice. So here we will try to understand the key factors which should be considered to get the right uh, architecture for particular problem. And those, I mean, factors are the first factor I will consider as a uh, project size and complexity. So Microservices usually suited for large scale complex application with multiple evolving components. Whereas monolithic architecture preferable for a small to medium sized application or when simplicity and quick development are priorities. So factor one, which is project size and complexity, microservices usually suited for large scale complex application and monolithic is preferably for a small and medium sized application. Okay. Another key factor, which is team structure. Microservices beneficial for large distributed or specialized teams, whereas monolithic architecture more suitable for a small co-located teams or when starting a project from fresh. All right, so let me repeat again. The second factor we always consider team structure and microservices are preferred for large distributed and specialized teams, whereas monolithic more suitable for a small co-located teams, okay? The next factor we will consider is a scalability needs. And microservices chooses if individual components of the application are expected to scale differently. Whereas monolithic architecture opt when uniform scaling of the entire application is acceptable. All right. Next key factor in selection is technology flexibility. Microservices are usually ideal for uh, ideal when different services require different technologies or frameworks, whereas monolithic uh, architecture opt for when a single technology stack is sufficient for your complete requirement. Another key factor to be considered is development and deployment frequency. frequency. Okay, so yeah, next one is development and deployment frequency. All right, and this is like microservices preferably for continuous development and deployment environment, whereas monolithic suitable for projects with less frequently updates required. Another key factor is risk tolerance. Microservices acceptable if the organization can manage the complexity and potential issues for of distributed system. 
then microservices preferable. But monolithic would be chosen if minimizing initial risk and complexity is a priority. All right. Then next factor is long term maintenance. Microservices, if the application requires long term maintenance and continuous updates, microservices can be more better choice, more manageable and better choice for you. Whereas for application with a relatively stable feature set and less frequent updates, you for that kind of scenario, monolithic would be a better choice for you. As a conclusion, I can mention here that selecting the right architecture depends on various factors like project size, team structure, team dynamics, scalability needs, and long-term maintenance plans. It is crucial to evaluate these factors against the organizational capability and the application requirement before deciding. So all these factors are very important. Please note that project size, team dynamics, scalability needs, long-term maintenance plans. And according to these factors, you will opt for microservice and monolithic architecture. So both architecture have their own advantage and disadvantage. You can't say that you always choose this or that. It is not possible. As per your contextual requirement, you have to opt usually. Okay. So this is a one good point or thumb rule for you. Please, please remember this thumb rule. It is very useful and very handy when we deep dive in hands-on projects. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for completing this video. And I hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview. Hope to see you in next video with new concept and skills needed for the system design interview. By then, keep learning, keep improving and keep sharing your knowledge.